Good afternoon. As a former governor of Iowa and ambassador to China, I know how leadership, how I know about leadership and how it is forged in times of great challenge. My challenges included the farm crisis in the 1980s and coordinating the U.S. policy in China during COVID-19. The real test of leadership occurs in response to a challenge. To chart policy that will address both short and long-term problems. The farm crisis taught me that the state of Iowa needed to be more diversified, that we needed to find ways to add value to agriculture and bring more industry and jobs to Iowa. And my experience showed me that government needs to be steady and pragmatic in order that you can overcome the challenges and accomplish significant goals. During the COVID-19 crisis, I was ambassador providing a bridge between the world's two largest economies, keeping trade and communications going. The citizens of Nigeria have a strong leader who knows agriculture and food value chains and how to make investments in both of them. He's our next speaker. He was former governor and rose to the challenge when his state and citizens needed leadership and guidance. Vice President Kashim Shatima was elected to the governorship of Borno State, and that occurred after the gravest of electoral circumstances. His challenge was to spur his people on and to seek reforms and reconciliation, and his efforts were greatly lauded by the people. As an agricultural economist, banker, and political leader, the vice president's insight in how to increase the quality, quantity, and availability of nutritious food was also invaluable. The citizens of Nigeria are proud to have a strong leader as their vice president who knows agriculture and food value chains and how to invest and to make them stronger, more resilient, and profitable. Having just assumed office this year, we are honored and humbled to have him address this dialogue, and we look forward to working with him and the Nigerian government to further e increase the implementation of in innovations and to strengthen agriculture trading and build climate resilience. Please welcome to the stage Vice President of Nigeria, Kashim Shatiba. Thank you so much, Ambassador Branstad. President Wall Food Foundation. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this gathering, much like those that preceded it, embodies the hope of our planet. We stand here today prepared to confront the uncertainties of our time. I feel privileged to share this space with you where we can exchange ideas and pull our efforts to nourish and safeguard our people. Each of you here is a stakeholder in the global determination. We approach you today as we have always done as partners. We are here to join hands impeding the present to preserve our future. We are here because of the threats looming over our well-being and the environment. 
For nearly four decades, this prestigious organization, the brainchild of the unforgettable Dr. Norman Bullock, has been a critical program of global agricultural policy. It has brought together the finest minds with a stake in the field of agri food. It has united those entrusted with the responsibility of saving this planet. We have come to recognize that saving the world is intrinsically tied to feeding it. And one cannot serve it without pace preserving it. As an agricultural economist, I am truly honored and impressed by the purpose and vision of this gathering in Iowa. So I commend the organizers for their wisdom and the warm hospitality extended to my delegation and my humble self. Your Excellencies and distinguished guests, allow me to share that Nigeria stands the essence of partnerships in sustaining the dreams and promises that has brought us together here. This is why we are already collaborating with institutions such as the African Development Bank, the World Bank, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IPAD, the Islamic Development Bank, and the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, to achieve food and nutrition security in Nigeria and beyond. With the invaluable support of our partners, we are exploring innovative strategies to transform this quest for food security into a thriving enterprise. Nigeria, under the leadership of His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has long demonstrated that the agri-food sector is a top priority. Our primary objective is to empower our farmers and attract investors. We are increasing primary production to harness the economic potential of agro-processing and industrialization. This is why, upon our government office, the president declared a state of emergency in agriculture. The connection between food and national security is too significant for us not to be alarmed by happenings around the world. Whether in response to unforeseen disasters like the COVID-19 pandemic, or the geopolitical frictions around us. Our belief in the power of partnership is the reason we have prioritized interventions like the National Agriculture Growth Scheme, NACS, the Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation, TART, Livestock Productivity and Resilience Support Projects, LFRES, the Green Imperative Project, GIP, and the Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones programs. All these interventions present profound economic opportunities for investors. With about 70 million hectares of unutilized arable land, which is 75% of our total land area, Nigeria offers a substantial opportunity to both local and foreign investors to boost agricultural productivity. This is why we have embraced the TART, GIP, and SAB programs, and we are investing in agricultural research through the National Agricultural Development Plan. This is why we are helping our farmers increase production and providing essential infrastructure for industries in peri-urban areas to expand their capacity. This, yes, this is the wisdom for our resolve to establish mechanization service centers in all of our 774 local government areas to facilitate essential primary production services. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are also promoting and implementing agency banking and extension services to provide, to provide value added and processing services for specific food and cash crops. With our demographic expansion, we are envisaged, we are projected to be the third most populous nation on earth by 2050. We hope to surpass the United States. So with our demographic expansion, the demand for agribusiness products in Nigeria has surged, especially for meat and dairy products. Historically, 
Much of this demand was satisfied through imports. Nonetheless, our administration is dedicated to reversing this trend. I assure you once again that Nigeria is prepared for the changing world for agribusiness. It is not just because our strategic location in West Africa provides easy access to regional and international markets, which is the promise of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, a single economic market for African countries. It's because of our conviction to dismantle investment barriers through a supportive policy framework, such as national agricultural technology and innovation policy. Because we believe that import rules are a significant factor, we have established a policy of zero duties on agricultural machinery and imposed restrictions on certain agricultural commodities to stimulate local production. We are also open preferential financing and subsidies, exemplified by an agricultural credit guarantee scheme that guarantees up to 75% of loans for agricultural ventures. We have also introduced a range of tax incentives, including tax holidays, deductions for locally sourced materials, labor incentives, and pioneer status incentives, making it easier to conduct business. Notably, we have opened the doors to foreign investors, allowing them to have 100% ownership in companies and repatriate their profits and dividends without hindrance. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, although there isn't enough time to highlight all that we have to share, I assure you that Nigeria is ready for agribusiness. We are committed to the journey towards a world where food security and nutrition are not luxuries, but fundamental rights for all. Thank you, and may our shared efforts bring forth a bountiful and sustainable world for all. Thank you.